Hello everyone, welcome back to Start Our Puzzle. My name is Kwame Chumese. Today, I want us to look into the film industry in Ghana. We can all testify that we no longer have a market for it in Ghana, which is really, really sad. To me personally, I think we're facing three main problems. One is how do we structure our storyline so it's appealing to the international market? Two, how do we get our movies distributed to the biggest platforms like Netflix, Stan, and Amazon Prime? And the biggest of all is how do we get funding for our movie projects? I'll always say that it's not fair when people try to compare uh, movies made in Ghana to movies made in Hollywood. Movies made in Hollywood could have got a budget, to, could have had a budget of like a billion dollars, and movies made in Ghana could have had a budget of like ten thousand to twenty thousand dollars. So it's not fair. It's not fair when people try to compare Ghana movies to movies made in Hollywood. But I think I've got the solution for you guys. I've been able to connect with Ghana's finest directors in the movie industry, Mr. Ben Asamoah. He was born in Ghana, did his schooling in Ghana, traveled to Belgium, and is now one of the biggest directors we have out there. He's a very talented young guy, very humbling and nice individual. He's put together a masterclass for we Ghanaians or people living in Africa. So if you really want to invest in the movie industry, you might be a director, you might be an entrepreneur that is looking at and venturing into the movie industry. So Ben has put together a special masterclass that is targeted for us. His masterclass will basically take us through how to structure your movie from an idea perspective and how do you get it written to how to get it funded. Yes, how do you get investors to invest in your movies so your movies can go far? Without talking too much, I'm going to head to Zoom so we have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Ben so we get to know him so he also takes us through the value we will get from the masterclass he's put together for us. Um, just know that Ben has won multiple awards in Belgium because he's done a lot of Belgium um, TV projects. He did, um, one of his biggest movies was called Sakawa. Some of you might have seen it. I'm going to leave a dis um, the link in the description section below. So Sakawa was actually um, funded, I think got funded by Vice. Yeah, he got a huge funding for it. He's got experience and he wants to share with us today. So if today is the first time you're coming here, Please show some love and click on that subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever we release any useful contents. And to all my returning viewers, I love you guys, man. I love you guys more and more. Yeah, thanks so much for supporting us. Without talking too much, I'm going to head to Zoom so we have a deep conversation with Mr. Ben Asamoah. Do not go anywhere, stay tuned. I'll be right back. Mr. Ben. Yes, my brother. Akwaba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. Nice connecting with you. Okay, so today we're going to do a deep dive into your masterclass about film. But before we do that, I want our audience to know who you are because I feel like only few people in Ghana know who you are. I've seen your video about Sakawa. That was the masterpiece. We'll talk about that later on today. But who is Ben Asamoa? Yeah, thank you very much, my brother. Um, so my name is Ben Asamoah, as you rightfully mentioned. I'm a terror culture kid. I was born in Ghana, grew up in Belgium, and lived both in Switzerland and the UK. So um, I studied audiovisual arts at the prestigious Ritz in, in Brussels, Belgium, and I graduated as a film director. Wow. Um, upon graduation, basically, I... Um, I started to look for a subject that I was passionate about that I could probably tell a story about. So um, I lived in Belgium and worked for years while on the film projects, looking for subjects that might be relevant to, to work on it. So just a bit of an idea. Um, I'm a Ghanaian still, so I still speak the local language. Awesome, um, awesome. Aside that, I speak uh, Dutch, so I'm very fluent uh, to a native level speaking uh, Dutch and Flemish. Um, I also speak English. I understand French and uh, German to a certain level as well. Wow. So, so you, you are a man of the world. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. 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 Did you ever live in Ghana or? Yes, absolutely. So I was born in Ghana, but my mom moved to Belgium when I was four years old and uh, she took me with her. 
So during that time period, I was in a boarding school in Ghana, uh, sorry, in Belgium. But my mom moved back in 96 to start a business in Ghana. And since I was a bit too young, she took me with her. And okay. between the ages of uh, 11 to 15, I stayed in Ghana. I did my JSS there, went to boarding school. So oh, wow. Yeah, that's my connection with Ghana. Okay, okay. And since then, so, okay, so from age zero to four, you were in Ghana, moved to Belgium, came back at 11. Was it 11 yeah. years? 11. And how long did you stay for? I stayed roughly about five years in Ghana. Five years. But, okay. um, even while I was in Belgium, by the way, um, during the summer times, we always used to go back. So um, just to give you a little bit of an idea, my mom is from the central region. Um, oh, so you speak fancy? Yes. <laughs> well, is that I why... <laughs> We will talk about the Saka what movie, but is that why all the the cast in the Saka what movie they were all talking about? Um, they were all speaking the Fanti language. Is that why? Yes. Is, oh, yes, okay, that's uh, okay. one of the reasons why. Um, I, I filmed at different locations in Ghana as well, but mainly I filmed in the central region. Yeah, in the central so, region. Yeah, so I'm a Fanti, uh, but my dad is from the Ashanti region, so uh, he's okay. originally from Obuasi. So, oh, um, okay so you're half and half yeah I'm half, I'm half. okay okay that's awesome okay so i actually saw the movie so guys if you've not seen his film about sakawa i'm gonna leave a link in the description section below please go watch it out it's amazing i like the way um he, he took like the storytelling of the sakawa was so amazing because normally in ghana when you talk about sakawa a lot of people tend to bash them because they feel like it's an illegal activity. But when, the way you went about the storytelling, it's like you didn't bash them and you, you didn't praise them to you. It's like um, they had no option. It's due to the conditions we had in Ghana. That's why most of the youth yeah, were into Sakawa. So guys, if you've not seen it, I'm going to leave a link in the description section below. So what inspired you to do a film about Sakawa? Yeah, that's a really good question, my brother. Um, so... During the ages of 11 and 16, um, when I moved back to Ghana, I was in a boarding school. And um, fast forward, after completing the university in, in Belgium, I'm, I went back to Ghana and my fellow students, uh, my fellow colleagues that basically I was in boarding school with, they were all doing this activity when I came back. And um, basically, I feel like it would have been the life I would have lived, lived? if yeah. I had not got the opportunity to live in mm. uh, Europe. So I feel very privileged, obviously, uh, because of the opportunities that I have. But it also gave me a chance to look at the life that I would potentially have lived if I lived in Ghana. So that was my personal motivation. for Motivation to... Oh, wow, wow. That's yeah. an amazing film. Also, there's also an external factor to it, you know, because I had previously also seen um, the story being told from a Western perspective in different okay. media platforms, on different media platforms. So I, it, it tended to make me a little bit annoyed, I would say. Because um, they painted the act black. Like when you yes. hear about Sakawa, like Thomas in yes. Ghana, they painted it black, but you didn't do that. Yes, so that was a little bit of my personal frustration whenever I mm. saw anything like that on TV. And I'm like, okay, it's it's easy to point fingers when you're not in that position mm. and you, you have like other options in life, you know? So um, that also motivated me to basically wanted to tell the story to uh, give them a little bit of a broader perspective. Okay, okay, okay. That's an awesome, awesome. Okay, all right. So now let's, switch the conversation a little bit i know you've got a master class that's going to help the um like young Ghanaians that want to get into the film industry yeah but before we get into that um the film industry in ghana is dying mm -hmm. okay i'm going to confidentially say that we have no market for it yeah mm -hmm. when, when you talk of gollywood it's like gone it's gone mm -hmm. gone yeah why why is it so is it something we're not doing wrong? Is it because we, we, cause we, a lot of Ghanaians, we Ghanaians especially, we have a lot of story to tell. No, so what, why is it that Ghana, we've got a lot of story to tell, but when it comes to the film industry, 
we're doing really bad and it's got to the point that it's like gone from the system if you want to find a Ghanaian movie you basically have to go on YouTube and yeah, yeah and the quality I'm, I'm not trying to bash it but mm. we are doing a terrible job yeah well, and I feel I feel it's time we do something about it so why do you think why do you think Ghanaian Ghana movie is not it's not progressing why yeah, this is a really good question. Um, and it's a very big question for that matter. But yes. there are different factors that led to this situation where we find ourselves in. I don't think necessarily there is lack of talent in Ghana because there is a lot of people who are very, very creative, who have mm -hmm. really, really interesting stories to tell. Um, but there are certain factors, as I mentioned, one of them is funding. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very important aspect of filmmaking, uh, which should definitely not be um, ignored. Another reason is also the influx of um, other films from foreign countries. Uh, so there has been different time periods that the Ghanaian market had an influx of um, movies and, and telenovels and, and different types of um, basically um, films and, and series from from different countries that mm -hmm. was uh, basically dumped onto the Ghanaian market and for free for that matter. Okay. So um, it, when you get something for free, people tend to feel like, okay, there is no risk involved. So um, in that sense, it's easy to consume. And it became a form of um, escapism if, if, um, if I'm, I'm really honest, because, you know, conditions are quite hard and harsh yeah. for a lot of people in, in, in developing countries, including Ghana. And when you have movies that can allow you to escape for one or two hours from your own personal reality, it kind of uh, makes you feel that you don't continuously have to think about your own struggles and worries. So um, the influ influx of uh, different cultures, different movies also played a factor to the fact that our movie industry was slowly dying out. And uh, there is also the part as well that uh, when it comes to filmmaking, a lot of um, the films that we make are not funded properly. And um, what I mean with that is there is no real structure in Ghana um, that really provides enough funding for um, every filmmaker to have the opportunity to tell the story they want to tell. So uh, that also influ has a big, big influence on the lack of um, the flourishing of the movie industry in our country and many more. But uh, these are just a few uh, mm. important reasons why the industry hasn't been that hasn't successful. Been, yes, yes. And uh, most time it's not fair. Like most people will be comparing what do you call it like um, Hollywood movies that was like I don't know they had a budget of like one billion yeah Absolutely. dollars yeah as compared to a Ghanaian movie that had a budget of like twenty thousand dollars yeah I believe I believe it's not fair and as you Absolutely. said I do agree with you in terms of um, funding so yeah we have a lot of script like film directors in Ghana that got amazing story like story structure but when it comes to funding like they struggle it's cause I, I believe they don't have they don't know where to look for funds, where and where to look for investors, yeah, yeah to invest mm. in it. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can even go deeper to say that um, there is a lot of talent. So, in that sense, when you give them the right funding, they mm. will be able to make world class movies, just yeah. like the way they make it in Europe or in the States or in other parts of the world. So. I, I definitely think that it's, it's a matter of having the right funding, the right organization and the structure in order for them to, to, to be able to, um, to tell their story. Yes, so um, mm. as you rightfully mentioned, it's hard to compare a movie that costs half a million or a million uh, pounds or euros dollars with one that has a budget of ten ten thousand ten thousand dollars yeah yeah it's yeah. just you know um the number one movie i think that was the avatar they their gross profit was um i might be wrong i think 2.8 billion from yes, the avatar it, movie it's, but it's that, definitely in those uh, figures yes yeah. and yeah. when i watched the movie i think what that was in 2009 
So I saw the movie. Yeah. The movie was directed by James Cameron, I think. Yes. Yeah. So this was basically like um, people in blue blue skin, and mm. um, the story storyline was basically like um, it's it's it talked about spirituality. Um, mm. It spoke about connecting with nature. It spoke mm-hmm. about um, is it love? Mm. Yeah. So all these like uh like things that we already have in africa mm-hmm. if that makes sense so when you watch the advertise like oh like tribalism um, um spirituality connecting with nature love it's like whoa so this is like a story for africans but because they had the funding they were able to make 2.8 billion um gross wow. profit from it yeah ghana Absolutely. we have a story we have we have a lot of story to tell we have the talent to actually make these movies so mm. ben asama we have you today where have you been hiding? So how can you help the movie industry in Ghana? How can you help us? Yes, um, uh, I've not really been hiding, you know. Um... <laughs> because, because I believe, I believe, because when I saw your sakwa, we was like, wow, this was structured. I actually read one of your um, the comments underneath the um, the sakwa um, the the film on YouTube, and one lady was like, oh, we need you in Ghana to fix um, um, the Ghanaian what do you call it, the Ghanaian film industry. It's like, yeah, I believe this is the time because one of my, I'm very passionate about growth and I'm very passionate about um, moving Africa forward. And that's why I actually started this channel to um, to be able to empower the youth to do something yes. for themselves. So connecting with someone like you, I believe we have a lot of the youth in Ghana that wants to get into the um, film industry. Or we already have people that are already in the industry that needs help, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Okay. I'm very yeah. excited you've put together a masterclass that mm-hmm. is going to actually um, help us because we need yeah. to upgrade our knowledge if we know where to go look for funds, if we know where to, I don't know. Because now, when we look, let's look at our neighbors in Nigeria, for instance. They've got a lot of their movies on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And when you go to, like, when it comes to Ghana, you've got, like, just a couple, like, I think one or two movies on Netflix. So I believe we do not know how to, I don't know, to make these connections. Will your masterclass be able to, I don't know, how is it structured? When someone yeah. takes your masterclass, will they be able to, I don't know, know where to go find funding and know how to get their movies distributed? So really, my brother, um, what it is, is I personally, I needed to go through experience yes. before I can be in a position to actually add value to others. And that's one of the things that I did. I went to film school. I made sure I had the right knowledge. Afterwards, I uh, went through all the process in terms of getting a film funded by like really tedious uh, processes Mm. uh, to get funding from different organizations around the world, including the European Union, the TV channels and so on and so forth. So I've acquired the knowledge, I've acquired the skills and uh, I have the life experience of also making a film as well. Aside that, I've also uh, made a film in Ghana. Uh, So I worked with some of the local talent in Ghana as well. And um, I can honestly tell you that I am now a bit more confident and I feel I'm in a position that I can share the knowledge that I've acquired over the years with other potential uh, film directors and passionate storytellers who have a story to tell. Now, When it comes to African stories, African voices, African storytellers, this is something that the world is very, very hungry for. So if you think outside the box for a minute, you don't necessarily need to make films that will only focus on Ghana. You can make films for a wider audience. As you mentioned, there are platforms such as Netflix, whom these days also acquire African films. So if you're able to make a film that is up to that standard, definitely you'll be uh, placed on that platform as well. And this is where I feel like I can share and add value when it comes to the masterclass, because funding is one of the main obstacles for filmmakers, even regardless where you are, but especially in uh, developing countries. Now, when it comes to funding in Ghana, there are a couple of sources that you can potentially go but it's very limited and uh, it's very saturated and it's also a bit more who you know so to speak yeah so you gotta look aside ghana elsewhere 
In that sense, there are different countries all around the world, in Europe, in America, even in Australia, that provide funding for filmmakers all around the world. Yes. And this is something that I can share with anyone who um, attends this masterclass because I know the exact places, the exact contact details and everything that I can provide in order for you to submit your project and increase your chances of getting funding. Now, one of the important things when it comes to funding is making sure like you put together a compelling presentation as well. It's very, very important because you're going to compete with a lot of other film directors from different countries. So in terms of the funding, it is quite a lot of money that you can get uh, from the different organizations around the world. But you need to make sure like you have a very, very strong or very, um, you know, when you have a very strong and compelling, sorry? When you need to have like a strong pitch for your investors, yes, right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And uh, in the masterclass, my intention is to go step by step and teach you all the imp important things that needs to be inside the presentation. So okay. we can talk about things like, as you mentioned, a pitch. A pitch is basically one line that your movie is all about. So you need to be able to be very precise and once someone asks you what is your movie about you don't need to tell the whole story just in one sentence be able to tell you what the film is about so this is one of the things that i'll go through when it comes to the masterclass another thing is why you are the one suitable to tell the story or why you are the qualified person because if i make a movie about eskimos for example mm. i'm a Ghanaian or at least I have Ghanaian roots, I lived in Ghana. So I might not be the most qualified person to talk about Eskimos, because my country is hot, isn't it? Yes. And Eskimos, it's quite different yeah. uh, atmosphere and temperature. So when you submit your, your dossiers, they look at things like that as well. So this is one of the things that I'll go through as well when it comes to what they call a director's note. So okay. it's a one page document where you sort of need to explain why you're the qualified person to tell that story. In essence, you're selling yourself. Okay. Um, aside that, you also need to have what they call um, relevance to society. It's also a one page document, which you need to explain why the story needs to be told. You know, why is it important for that story to be told right now and not within 10 years, not within five years, or why wasn't it told last year? So these are all important things that you need to make sure you put in the document. Then there are other things such as uh, the treatment itself, which is also very important. So um, I will share with you a structure that is very important when it comes to storytelling. So it's not just a matter of writing sentences to fill the page. It's a matter of structuring your story. What's the beginning? What's the middle? What's the end? There is something that we call like an eight sequence structure. When you watch a lot of the Hollywood films, they are all based on eight sequence structure. So it starts from what they call an exposition. That means in exposition, you tell who, what, where, why. You have to tell all the important details about your main character, about your main character within that document, as uh, within the treatment, as well as when it comes to, let's say, the eight sequence, that is like the resolution. So the resolution comes after the climax. So when you have the climax, is in Ghana what we used to call uh, the Bruman versus Killer. The, the Bruman versus Killer. <laughs> yes. Good, so good it's, the last, oh. <laughs> it's the good last. Good old days. Step. Good old days. Yeah, the last killer. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So you, that is what they call the seven uh, sequence. And the eighth sequence is when the Broman has killed the killer and returns to his family or rescues whoever he needs to rescue. That is what they call the resolution. So when you are structuring a story, you need to go through an eight sequence structure in order to have a very powerful and compelling story. 
Um, it, these are some of the things that are important uh, for your films to get funded as well. And um, aside that, there's also something which we call uh, film style. So every film has a particular style. You can film in a way which is, it's called visual style. So you can film a film with a camera, which is handheld. You can film on a tripod. You can also film um, with using uh, trails. So whereby uh, the film has a lot of camera movements, drones and things like that. All these are belong to uh, storytelling language. So you need to understand the purpose and when exactly to use those elements. And these are all important things that I believe I can help when it comes to the masterclass in making sure like they have the right presentation to get the funding. And last but not the least is also the budgeting. It's also very, very important. How much money do you ask for in order to get your film approved? So even though the funding monies, there are, there is a maximum and a minimum, how do you make sure like you write in the right amount? Because you need to have a breakdown sheet that also explains which funds will be allocated to which purpose or which funds will be allocated to whatever it is basically. So you need to really make sure like in your document, you have everything waterproof, bulletproof, ready wow. so that it wow. will not be denied, denied. from funding. I Absolutely. think I'm, 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 I'm made test of I've learned a lot of things just now. Wow. Now yeah. I'm going to give a lot of respect to like all these film directors and filmmakers. I basically thought, yeah, they just, I don't know, you take a camera, action, they just start killing each other and yep, the movie's over. Wow. I never knew we had like every film like had a lot of details and a lot of, what do you call it? A lot went into the filmmaking. Wow, Absolutely. wow, wow, Absolutely. wow. It's wow. very Learned structured. Very it's structured. Very... Very... Okay, I think Disney uses this structure a lot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, because in most of the Disney movies, yeah, like the prince and the princess, someone is go someone will kidnap the princess. The princess will have to go train and go save the princess. End of the day, they get married and yay. I think, yeah, it's, it's all structured. Okay. So Absolutely. how... How long does the masterclass go for? Is it like, um, is it going to be like a long course, like for a year, a month, or is just like um, right straight to the point sort of um, classes that goes for, let's say three days or like 45 minutes or one hour. So how long does it go for? Yeah, absolutely. In terms of uh, attention span, um, it's better to break down a masterclass in, in, in different sessions, just okay. because if you, give too much information at one moment it's an information overload to a lot of people yeah, and uh, yeah. science has taught us that it's important to have breaks and so on and so forth because the attention span is not that long so based on that i believe a 45 minute session will be uh, ideal and um, from what i think um, will be the best will be uh, four sessions of 45 minutes okay okay and yes. is, is it going to be in the form of um like an online course or like a webinar or yeah how, how is it going to be how is how are you going to deliver the course to your audience yeah i think the best way at the moment um when it comes to ghana is to do like an, an online webinar okay. you know where you get as many people as possible where you can um, also give them the opportunity in, in the first class at least to ask questions so that they, they have a better understanding and an idea of what it all entails and what they can really get out of the master class, you know? Because okay. um, it's, 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 it's one thing saying that, um, yes, we're gonna do a master class and we're gonna learn everything, but it also needs to be interactive. So. I prefer to have that interaction because a lot of people might have questions and yeah. I would like to have that interaction. So the first masterclass will be more of like a family feeling where we all share ideas, we all um, share basically anything that comes in mind when it comes to storytelling. And I will do my possible best to provide all the knowledge based on my experience as well. 
Okay. Is this masterclass only targeted for Ghanaians or can people in like the rest of the African countries join? At the moment, um, I feel like the masterclass that I'm doing will not necessarily be only for Ghanaians, but okay. I have Ghana in mind. Oh, thank you for that. Ghanian, thank you for that, know, brother. It, it makes more sense to make sure like you, you make sure home is fine. Everything yes. is perfect. Mm. And um, it's, we, we, we definitely don't discriminate. So if anybody is elsewhere who feels they can also uh, feel valued or add value or receive value, then absolutely that person is more than welcome. But the focus will be on uh, people who have Ghanaian roots, who, who want to make projects in Ghana, or at least from Ghana, but receive funding from the rest of the world in order to make the amount. Okay, guys, you heard from Ben Asamoah himself. He's one of us. So if you ask me, I'd rather go for a masterclass with a Ghanaian that is from our roots, that understands our language, that can communicate with us better than going for a masterclass with James Cameron, if that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also relating to, because, you know, like, I, as you mentioned, you have, like, you know, all the important big film directors, as we mentioned, yes. James Cameron, Steven Spielberg, but to which extent can you relate to them? Relate to them, uh, yes. You know, that yes. is important that um, they are in Hollywood and it, it's a bit far from us, you know? Yes. Um, when you have someone who comes from the central region, from Gomua, Aboi, Aboi. It's, it's a very... It's a very different feeling and it feels like, yes, if my brother can do it, why would I not be able to do it as well? You know, based on his knowledge and experience willing to share with me, I can speak the local language with him, you know, and it, it helps bond in compared to uh, an established Hollywood film director who has got no idea of, of, of um, your situation or your yeah. background. some got no idea where ghana is they think uh, <laughs> africa they don't know africa is a continent they just feel africa is just one country so yeah mm -hmm. okay Absolutely. so how, how can someone join this master course yeah so the, the idea is for us to um organize uh, via you your platform as well i believe like a collaboration with you will be ideal oh, because um, i'm open <laughs> You already yes. have a really good platform and mm -hmm. you've been uh, quite inspiring in terms of sharing knowledge with um, uh, a lot of Ghanaians who want to do business in Ghana, yes. who want to yes. enter different avenues and, and make some income for themselves. So I, I personally, I feel like you're already adding value, sharing knowledge. And um, I feel like it's in that sense, it's also aligned so um, the, the idea will be to work together with you and make sure like they, we, we provide them with a link, okay. uh, a place that they can follow the steps and in order for them to log in on the webinar when the time is right. So yeah, um, the communication will be done together with you. Okay, okay, that sounds awesome. And I'm ready and open. So guys, I'm going to work with um, Mr. Ben Asamoah um, back end then we'll provide a link in the description section below. So if you want to join this masterclass, please click on the link in the description section below now, because before I will upload this video on YouTube, I will make sure we've done our homework and we've provided you with a link to join this masterclass. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. He's won a lot of awards in Belgium. He's well known, he's well connected. So if you want to like um, invest or if you're looking at joining the film industry, this is the time for you to do that. Mr. Ben Asamoa, any any last, um, what do you call it? Last, um, I don't know, audience. inspiration for our, yeah. our audience before we call it a day? Yeah, absolutely. I, I do think, as I mentioned earlier, um, there's a lot of stories in Ghana. Yes. And I believe that sometimes um, the lack of funding can discourage a lot of people uh, in order not to tell a story. And um, one thing that I also like to mention is that it's important as a storyteller to also make sure like you speak to people who have experienced um, how it is to make a film. Because I went to film school in Belgium and one thing that I learned throughout was that 
the teachers who actually uh, gave me the, le- the, the the teachers who taught me, they most of them haven't not made a film before. Oh. And so when I graduated and I asked them like, where do I get funding? You know, they were clueless. They were really, really clueless. So I was basically on my own. I didn't have any support whatsoever. And it was a wild, wild west out there. You know, uh, a lot of rejection, moving up and down, going to different countries. And it was a long, long, tedious process of five years before I was able to get the funding. So I think it can definitely be valuable for me to share my knowledge with anyone who wants to make a movie because um, it will save you not only time, but also energy and on the long run, also money. And um, I do believe that it, it makes sense that you, you get the knowledge from someone who has actually gone through the process and made a movie before. And, and that's why I made the reference that a lot of my teachers teach, but they never taught me about funding. And I don't blame them because um, if you don't have experience with something, you can teach it. You can't give, yeah. You can give it, you can teach yeah. it. And this is something that I had to discover the hard way. So I, I would suggest anyone who has a strong desire of uh, making a movie who believes is capable of telling a story should join the, the webinar. It will be very useful and uh, they are more than willing to ask any question whatsoever. Okay, okay. You heard from the man himself. Thank you so much, Mr. Ben, for joining well, us today on Startup Hustle. I think well, um, well. once the first, second, third session of the webinar is over, yeah, we'll have another interview with you. And we'll also maybe invite one or two of your students to give their testimony as to how the webinar went. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Yeah, all Thank the you. way from Spain. Yeah, so yeah. until next time, I'll say bye for now. <laughs> bye. Brother, have a nice day. Thank you.